uh, present numerous challenges, too many to cover in one press conference. Um, we knew when you saw the signing class that they put together, knowing who they had coming back, it, they immediately became a Final Four contender. You don't ever know how freshmen are going to react. So, you know, you're a little hesitant to anoint somebody in the preseason. But the way the freshmen have played, the way they've gelled with their upperclassmen, they've got the U.S. Olympic coach sitting on the bench. So probably the best team that we've faced yet. Um, but one that we enjoy the challenge of playing. Um, we played them late in the tournament last year. Um, they like to play fast. I think they're averaging 94 points a game in SEC plays. So uh, it won't be a tempo. We won't have to worry about trying to increase the tempo and maybe having to slow it down for a change. Uh, but I think we're in a really good spot. We knew this first four games was a really um, hard stretch. Um, opening home with one of the top teams in the league, a road game, and then back with another top team, and then home against Missouri, who we've not fared well against lately. So uh, game three of the four, excited about it. Uh, and I do have an update on Jalen Mason for you uh, whenever you're ready for it. Uh, a yeah. tease. Yeah. There you I guess go. We can, well, I guess we can start there. What, what, what you want to start with Jalen? Sure. Okay. We are going to redshirt Jalen Mason. Um, it's something we talked about from the beginning. We knew it was a possibility. It was certainly not our hopes. Um, she had a, an injury that requires some time to heal and some time to evaluate and see how it goes. Uh, it's gone really well, but it hasn't gone as fast. Uh, if you've seen her out there in practice, you know she's doing really well. But it is a lot to ask of anybody to try to interject themselves into a lineup this far along into a season. Um, and if y'all know Jalen, y'all know how much she loves being a Razorback. She just gave the senior speech at the graduation at the midterm. She's a huge part of the SEC Student Council. She loves being a student athlete, and we couldn't be excited we're going to get to have her for one more year. Um, you know, it, it's um, – for us, it would have been nice to have that shot in the arm, uh, but it, for the best thing for the kid is certainly to use the full year, let her come back next year, and, and be a senior all over again for us. She'll, she'll be able to talk to you all later. Uh, can you talk about, again, they got size, which uh, you know is, is, is a problem for you guys. How much now different is that having – Oberg back, having Williams back, and maybe you can run some different bodies at them. Well, I think it helped us going against Auburn. I think it was certainly a huge key. Uh, we've learned to kind of defend one big kid. Uh, the problem is they've got several. Um, you know, a couple years ago at our place here, we got one of their big kids in foul trouble, and a freshman came in and got like 19 and 12 on us. So it's not just Aaliyah Boston, although she's arguably one of the best freshmen, period, but certainly one of the best big freshman in the country. Um, if we try to go to the basket too much, it could be a problem. But we could also use that to our advantage a little bit. Um, you know, drive it in there and kick. She does like to block shots. I think they lead the country in block shots. So uh, we've got a tendency to drive it in there and be pretty good pitch out shots. Um, so it's a challenge, but it's not, um, it's not something we haven't practiced against. So there's not like they have two of them. Uh, at the same time, they usually play the one big with four guard types, so it's a traditional matchup for us. But um, she's not your um, average just big kid. She can really run. She's going to come out and defend ball screens. She's going to trap ball screens. Um, and, and that's what makes her special. Uh, she can do it all. How about the other half of that? You're, you know, you got multiple options uh, in the post. Are you thinking of maybe at times using two, or does that how's that? We'd really hope to in the beginning of the year, um, before all the injuries happened. I was very hopeful that we would be able to play six or eight minutes a night in the non-conference two post players at the same time and figure out those rotations. Due to injuries, that wasn't we weren't able to practice it at all. We can still practice it some, but. Just don't have a lot of confidence and a lot of evidence to go with it yet. Um, I'm not telling you we won't, but it's still a work in progress. And, and I think we, we're shooting it well enough, and we have become adequate defenders. Uh, our defense at Auburn was tremendous. Uh, so we're going to keep sticking with that and see if we can uh, improve in those areas rather than change the lineups for now. But the depth gives us a lot of fouls. 
it gives us the ability to really stress them out and run the floor fast and every time. So that's where I hope we turn it into advantage is how we're able to run in transition and use fouls. Um, what uh, as far as uh, making the threes and uh, you know obviously Amber had a, had a nice game, but it yep. seems like you're able to. I mean, you're able to explode and and put together runs. Yeah, um, I don't know. Did you do that graphic that's on the internet? There's a really cool graphic going around with our shooting percentages from the three point line. Um, it, you know, that, that's meaning that we're doing it consistently, uh, and it's not just one person. Um, you know, it's been Lex, it's been Amber, it's been Michaela one game, several games. IT has shot it really well as of late. Um, so I think not only the number, but the versatility and the number of people that can do it. You can't just focus on one kid. The second you do that, the other kid makes six or seven. Um, so it's got to be something we stay good at to be competitive against the top teams. Uh, but then when we do go on those – like that spurt Amber had at the end of the, third, the first quarter against Auburn, it can it suck the life out of that gym. They jumped on us 9-2. to two, The band was yelling at us. Uh, it was loud. It was active. And then literally two minutes later, you could hear us talking on the bench. Um, so knowing that that's there is comforting. Uh, you don't want to have to rely on it. Um, there's going to be 13,000 people uh, in South Carolina. Um, so... You, you you know that you have it, but you don't want to have to count on it. Uh, it's scary to say, oh, we need a 17-1 run here uh, to get back in this thing. But it is comforting to know that if one player happens to not have the shot that night, I think we have enough makers that somebody's going to be able to keep us in it. Michaela back to da Paul. Yeah. Uh, Michaela Daniel, I mean, nice bounce back. Yeah. Had a nice nice night, uh, nice afternoon on Sunday. Really good. You know, when you consider that Auburn's stated goal for the last eight years is we're going to take it from you. We're going to steal it from you. We're going to steal it from you. And we're going to try and try and try from tip to buzzer. Uh, they didn't from her. And she really uh, managed the game. And then the second she came out, IT comes in and gets five assists in four minutes, throwing them to uh, – she, she assisted Amber on every one of those threes. So, again, that little pop, Michaela comes in, gets you off to a great start, and then IT comes in and just takes it into another gear. So, And then they bounced back right after each other, really defended well. Uh, they were a huge part of the double teaming in the post, too, and scrambling out of it. So, um, Michaela, good bounce back, and IT continues to play really good. Any – Thing that surprised you out of the SEC thus far? Uh, overall, like, yeah, well, not really. I mean, it's still a little early. Um, you know, I've all I've said all along that I think we've all picked Alabama way too low. Uh, Brett got to call that game the other night. I think their, their game at home against South Carolina proved that. Um, I think the other thing that we've starting to see is anybody's going to be able to beat one level up or down. I think. I think there's four probably tiers in our in our conference right now um, maybe we got an east west north and a south this year we've we've had it in the divisions in the past but you know I think it looks like South Carolina and, and Texas A&M are playing at a really high level with Kentucky and tennis and um, Mississippi State as well then there's about five or six of us in the middle and eight or seven or eight of us that are going to be beating each other up so um, I do think people could maybe win up a level or down a level um, but it's going to be really hard to go two or three levels if, if you're trying to be the top team from the bottom. I think it's going to be hard this year. What do you guys have to do to get, I guess, what get out of that middle that we've talked about the last couple of years? Just every possession's got to go have the same value. You know, I think the A&M game we, we played, I think we played 71 possessions was what we counted, and 59 of them were pretty good, but those other 12 weren't. And you can't have 12 off possessions and expect to beat anybody at the top. You got to narrow that gap, get it closer to zero. Um, you've got to make shots that you've routinely made earlier in the year um, to beat those top teams. I think our defense needs to keep getting better. Our rebounding has been adequate, good enough, but that has to improve. We have to stay good at what we're at, what we're good at. That's, you know, I'm a bright spot guy, so we've got to stay good at those three things, getting to the foul line, getting layups, and getting, and getting made threes. But then we've got to add something. Is it, you know, defending the ball screens? Is it rebounding a little bit better um, to beat 
one of those top four teams. Well, you just brought something up that I was going to ask. You make 10 out of 11 free throws in the first half and then don't shoot another one in the second. Was that kind of odd? It was odd. Yeah, it was odd. And we've, I think, do we still lead the country and made free throws? Yeah. I use that stat a lot throughout the game when I'm having conversations with people that will listen to me during the game. And usually that falls on deaf ears. Um, but it is a fact. I'm not reporting. Uh, it's a fact. We do lead the country and made free throws. So, uh, hint, hint, hint. But it, it didn't. I don't think they fouled us a whole bunch. They're, it's not like there were fouls. We were settling for threes, and they were going in. Uh, we probably weren't as aggressive driving it in there, but when we did drive it in there, we were literally wide open. Uh, Taylor rolling in there four or five times wide open, um, and then the other ones were perimeter jump shots. So uh, it's not a number that we um, would like to see continue, but if the game dictates that, I'm okay with it too. You guys have won a lot of games this season by a pretty steady margin. Yep. Uh, did you expect that coming into this season? No chance, especially when you look at now what those teams that we were beaten by a large margin that you're talking about are doing within their leagues. Uh, we scheduled teams that were winning their leagues and top of their league. We expected a lot more close games. Um, I think it was a couple of factors. One, I think our depth got better. This was, we have our, our second team would come in and, and sometimes in the past when that happened, we didn't score ever again. Now they continue to score. And then when the other team subs, now we're playing our second versus their seconds, and, and that score, that margin kept growing. Um, in the past, it shrunk. This year, it grew. So I think that's part of, the, part of it. Um, but it was not expected. Uh, I, I don't – in fact, I don't like it. It's not I'm, – I'm uncomfortable that we're prepared. I, I don't feel like we're ready – for an end of game situation. It doesn't matter how many times we practice it in the practice gym against our guys or against each other, it's not the same. And I'm very, very fearful that it's gonna cost us. Uh, but I don't think we could have put together a better schedule with where we were at and what we were expecting. Um, but I can tell you our kids have overachieved and outperformed our expectations, which is a good thing. But it has got me scared to death that we're not gonna be ready when it does come time. Having so many players on the roster who not only played South Carolina but now beaten them, just how much does that help with the mentality going in, kind of humanizing them almost? We've, we've been uh, down 10 or 12 the last couple of years, maybe 20, when we went into their place. I think now it's an it's a even game. Um, and, you know, 13,000, okay, give them a few points for that. Um, the things that they do, uh, the championship banners you play in. Anytime you're playing underneath the Final Four banner for them, it that costs you a couple of points. But I don't think we're down double digits like we used to be. Uh, our kids do have a confidence. Um, and I think that's important. You hit on a really good point that um, I walked around, I, and it came up on the radio yesterday. Somebody said, after a disappointing loss to Texas A&M, I was like, hmm, okay, that's good. Uh, everybody expects us to beat the preseason conference favorite now and a team that was ranked in the top 10 or 11. Um, that's a good thing. It's a good thing that people think it should be disappointing that we're losing, and it's a good thing that our kids are walking in confident. So another little benchmark. Um, but th just the way they're practicing, the talk, they're not uh, as um, in awe. And, you know, you can say that kids shouldn't have that at this level, but it's a real thing. We're all human. You know who these guys are. You see the rankings. You see they've played against these kids they know, but it's nice that our kids have a confidence that they've not had in the past. What's been Jalen's reaction to knowing that she's been redshirting? Um, just like you'd expect out of Jalen Mason, a mature 30-year-old approach of I've got a future ahead of me uh, inside and outside of basketball. I want to be able to walk. You know, when I'm older, I want to be able to play professional basketball if that option's there. Um, it was very well thought out. If you know this kid, she's got a, a computer laptop full of questions, and she checked the boxes off. And, and um, we've been talking about it literally every week since it happened. How do you feel? What do you think? Let's not rush this. We could have easily have said at the beginning of the year, she's red shirting the entire year. Um, but I don't think that would have been – that's just not Jalen Mason. It's a let's see how this thing is going. What's the best thing for the team? What's the best thing 30, 40 years from now? She is a 30,000-foot, big picture, 
whatever analogy you want to put to it type kid, and it's why she's uh, so special. And she loves being a Razorback. Um, you know, I asked her right at point blank. I said, you know, in this world of that's my phone, sorry. I uh, thought I hit it off. Go ahead and answer it if you want, Matt. No, just kidding. Um, what was I? Oh, she loves being a Razorback. So, I, I mean, I asked her. I said, hey, you take this red shirt, you're coming back to play for us, right? And she just started laughing at me. She said, yeah, Coach, I love it. You know, I love it here. So, um, those were all things. But whatever's best for that kid. Um, but she handled it very, very maturely. Um, and, you know, now she's – uh, practicing full speed as the other team's best player. So far, she's been Kennedy Carter. The other day, she was, uh, you know, she'll be one of the Zia Cook and Beal and Taisha Harris the next two days for us. She's kind of enjoyed that role. She's been a captain for us before every single game. She goes out, meets with the officials. Uh, she's still a very vocal person in the locker room um, and valuable. Just we haven't had her on the court Um she kicked our butt in practice the other day, too. It was kind of like one of those. But it was also that moment of, man, what would have happened if she were playing 38 minutes a night right now? You know, so um, it's – I'm interested for y'all to talk to her. She's a neat kid. When y'all talk to her, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in her maturity and how it's been thought through and thought out. All good? All right. Okay.